guys, how's it going? Today we're gonna to be working on a peaceful project. We have two different types of seedling that I would like to pot up into a larger size container. And then I just wanna give you a look at how our seeds are doing in general. We've kind of had ours going in different batches. You know, we started with the Lysianthus and then uh, I did some ranunculus. I'll show you how those are doing. Uh, we did geraniums and artichokes in here in the Hartley. That's where I'm starting because the geraniums are one of those that I want to take to the greenhouse to pot up. And here are the geraniums. Don't they look awesome? So they were planted just about 40 to 45 days ago, right around in that range. I didn't count exactly, but it's been a little over a month now. Artichokes as well, I had spotty germination with those. I have had the seeds for a very long time uh, and I don't know what the deal is, except for like randomly one will just pop up way later. Like these are way further along than that little one right there. So I'm kind of like, well, I mean, you never know. Maybe some of these will start popping too. We'll see. But I don't really need that many artichokes. This right here that we have is a plenty. But the geraniums just did great. We planted 121 cells, 100 and let's see, I think 116 of those came up or 117. I think there's one, two, three, four cells that did not germinate. But this one did though, kind of like the artichoke. That one germinated, but it looks kind of sad. So yeah, yeah, it's not coming out of its little seed casing. I feel like that's a super great germination rate and that's a lot of geraniums. We'll have a lot to plant, which is really exciting. So I just kind of wanted to talk about, you know, potting up seedlings in general, because, you know, for most things, in most cases, you're wanting to plant things to where you can plant them in their seed trays and then pot them right, or plant them rather, right outside into the garden. Uh, having to pot up a bunch of seeds in between is not always a desirable thing to do. It is on some things like these geraniums. I wanted them to have some size. I would like them to be nice, robust, maybe almost blooming plants by the time we're ready to plant them out, which means you do have to start them early enough to where you can pot them up so they can grow a little bit bigger. But like, let's say snapdragons, for example, we planted five flats of those. There's 72 cells in each flat. I'm gonna get my calculator out. 72 times five. 360. In that case, I would not want to have to take those, pot them up into 360 larger containers, which I don't have anyway. I don't think I've got 360 hanging around here. And then you have to have room for them, you know, somewhere on a table or on the ground, somewhere that gets strong light, that has airflow, I mean, all those things. And then you have the extra time of tending to them. So most things, especially like that, you're just wanting to get the seeds going and then plant them straight out in the garden. Uh, but today we've got the geraniums to do. I'm going to leave the artichokes in these containers for a little while longer because they're just not big enough. I don't think they need the space yet. And then we've got some lettuce that I want to pot up. We started that way earlier on. I'll look up the date on that, but they look really good. And I would like to get those potted up. And I don't actually intend on planting those out in the garden. We're gonna pot them up in their last container. We're gonna let them head in the greenhouse and then we'll harvest and eat those. Hopefully before we even have lettuce growing outside. I mean, we're a little bit late this year. I mean, here we are. But middle of March and we're still in the 20s at night. We got snow yesterday. We have snow on the forecast again. I mean, I'm not gonna complain about it though because we do need moisture even though I'm excited for spring, but it just gives us a little bit of a break too and gives us a little longer to work on some of these types of projects. Isn't this pretty though? This is the bullseye series right here. Bullseye salmon. Uh, geranium they have a darker variegation uh, the little white marks on here that's our hard water so you know like right now I have not been watering them from underneath um, they've been just kind of watered from over the top and so they do get a little hard water damage but let's grab these and take them into the greenhouse
I'm all out here, I was taking stock of the containers I have left. So this is what I normally bump my stuff up into. Just used four inch nursery containers and I tried to save the trays too. I've only got 49 of these left of this size. I've got some other random things down here, but I really like this because if you can save trays too, it keeps everything contained and nice and tidy. I forgot I used so many for our Renaculus project that that kind of left me with fewer than I thought. Anyway, Renaculus are doing great. These were potted up roughly 40 days ago as well. So that's what kind of growth we've had. Amazing, amazing growth. There are a few that didn't come up. You know, remember the questionable ones? A few of them have. I put a question mark on the tag of the ones I thought weren't gonna germinate, but like 12, let's see, three, six, nine, 12, 10 out of the 12 came up, so that's awesome. Anyway, so I'm gonna run down to the garden center really quick. It'll be fast though, they're closed today, so we're just gonna run in, grab what we need, and come right back and get this project going. Okay, here we are. Oh, real quick, while we're here, look at all the veggies with the googly eyes. <laughs> they are so funny. I love it. Boy, I think that broccoli shows up better than all of them. Okay, let's get this done. This is what we're gonna need right here. I'm gonna probably have to go up and get more. Okay, <laughs> I think this is gonna be enough. I gotta go write down what I took. <sighs> you know, it's feast or famine with these containers right here. You need them for such a short amount of time and then you end up having to store them for months out of the year. Got them written down on my very own clipboard right here. Boom. All right, so I think we're set. We should have enough. There are a few of these, you know, that aren't ready to be potted out, but a lot of these are, you know, if we lift these up, you can see some of the roots are coming through the bottom. And I just really want to get them bumped up before, you know, they get a little too root bound and start to struggle. I did want to show you these. These are tongs that kind of go along with these growy seed starter kits from Gardener Supply. Uh, they just fit really nicely. So when you get ready to, you know, take your seedlings out, you just pop them in, pinch, and you can pull them out pretty easily. That one didn't come out very easily. <laughs> okay, let me try it again. This is a nice big one. Oh yeah, look at this. Really nice looking root system. I haven't watered these yet today, so they're a little dry. I might go ahead and give them a little water before I try to pull the rest of them out. We're gonna be using the organic potting mix. And this part is pretty self-explanatory. I'm just going to be filling up these containers with the organic potting mix. We will pop all of these geraniums out, put them in their containers, and that will be that. Let me show you the other seedling we're gonna be potting up. Our lettuce right here. Aren't these beautiful? So these are the ones that I started specifically to see if we could get them to head up in the greenhouse to see how long it would take. Um, I did tear all of these apart not that long ago. I separated them because I had, you know, two or three seedlings per container and I wanted to bury these in particular. This is the Crispino Iceberg lettuce and it was looking a little leggy. This one is Casey. It's a butterhead lettuce. Oh, gorgeous. Uh, anyway, the leaves are nice and thick and so healthy, but these stayed really flat and, and nice and compact while these were starting to flop around. So I showed you guys how you can take your seedlings out and pop them down further in the soil. Uh, I put all of the ones that I separated right over here. I popped them all in this little white shallow bowl and they have grown a lot. I've cut a little bit of the lettuce out and it just kind of keeps growing. I need to groom some of this out, but they look amazing but i really wanted to try to see if i could get these to head up in here see how they would do because it's been maintaining at night like roughly 55 60 degrees and then during the day if the sun's out it can get like 80 85 in here lettuce doesn't really love it to get super warm so i'm not sure how things are going to go but i would like to get those potted out for sure because i'm sure we're dealing with a much more advanced root system than the geraniums i'm guessing we are anyway i don't know let's see Beautiful. Oh, that's just a gorgeous seedling right there. Well, it's like a plant now, <laughs> a little further than a seedling. So that's our project out here, just repotting. It's just starting to sprinkle outside. So when we're done with the repot, I will give you a little tour of the other seedlings in here. We do have some action on the perennials, quite a bit of action on the annuals that we just started this last week. So things are going well. Let's get these repotted.
right guys, 124 geraniums. Can you believe that? They look so good, all tucked into their new homes. They've been fertilized. They'll get lots of light out here. They should be very, very happy. Now this one's missing some leaves. I'm not exactly sure what happened there, but overall, they look really healthy and really great. Oh, love it. You can see on the end here, I did pot up five of our lettuce starts right here. And I ran out of this size of container. I did not plant all of the lettuce today because I really just wanted this size uh, of container. I might have more in the loft, but I am starting to lose light. So I'll root around in there later, uh, but I wanted to give you a tour of the seedlings before it does get too dark. Also planted some lettuce in this elevated raised bed. This one's from Gardener Supply. I love the look of lettuce like this. Lettuce, cabbage, whatever, that forms rosettes that you plant in real tidy rows. I think that's going to be really pretty and fun to watch fill in. So this is what we're left with in terms of lettuce. And I might, I might pop some in the grass toward the backside. You can see the grass is looking a little bit weary and we only have just a little bit of time left with it before we're gonna have to take it out. Uh, so anyway, we'll see. But I used every last container that I thought were the appropriate size for this project. I am thinking I might pop the ranunculus out early. I might fashion some sort of a hoop with plastic, you know, a little dome system out there uh, to where it keeps them a little bit warmer because I do think that they will be happier not in here. They're growing really, really well. I'm really happy with it, but they are starting to get so rooted up in their containers. I think I showed this one the other day. It's already tight in its container again. I need to water in here too. Whew. Yeah, see, <laughs> I'm thinking I should probably figure out a situation for these um, before they start not being happy. You know, I originally started those ranunculus with the idea of having those grown and ready for containers, which I think would be perfect if we were gonna have a longer spring. Uh, I mean, cause here we are cruising toward April and we usually start summer containers at the beginning of May. And I don't really wanna do a ton of spring containers and then just have to rip them out for summer plants. So I'm thinking it might be better if I just get those out even into the cut garden. I haven't decided yet. Something I'm really learning this year is that, you know, they say pelleted seeds, you wanna use them up within the year that you get them. And I think that that is, that is true. Uh, because the Cafe Cream Foxglove seeds were pelleted, some of my onion seeds were pelleted and they were both types that I had um, held on to for a few years actually. And I went and got even more candy onion seeds that are just starting to sprout now because I got a new batch of them because so many of them just didn't germinate while all the other ones were just doing so great. So you'll see in some of them, especially Foxglove, and onions, I had a little bit of spotty germination and I think that was because of the pelleted seeds. So when you are buying pelleted seeds, only buy the amount that you need to seed that year. It just isn't worth holding on to them to the next year to try to get them to grow. In this flat, we have the Camelot cream, so different than the cafe cream. Really good germination on that one. This flat, I can't remember. Oh, this is another, did I do two flats of Camelot cream? Hmm, well, there you go. Good germination on that one as well. Right here, I just noticed these starting to pop like a day or two ago. These are the Sugar Plum Fox Glove. And I think we've got every cell, but maybe three up so far. Right here, we've got the Penstemon, which this first batch right here, this is the Twizzle Coral. And I'm seeing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight out of 10 up. No. Nine out of 10 up, that's pretty good. Uh, lovely Penstemon is seed I've had for a really long time. I don't see any up in that section. So I don't know what the deal is. We won't uh, give up on them yet. Some are just slow. This is the uh, Summer Pastels Yarrow, looking great. We've got the Columbine just starting to come up in the last day or two. Some of these just take a while. Um, this flat here is the Magic Fountain Cherry Blossom Delphinium, just starting to pop yesterday. So I'm excited. You can see that some of them, there's some green in some of them. And then our onions here. Now these were started right around February the 10th or so. So you can see all the shallots and the walla wallas all came up beautifully. This section and this section are candies. So you can see how sparsely the pelleted seeds came up. That's the ones that are taller. So I have a new batch of seeds that are just starting to break through the soil now. I just went in and just pushed a bunch of new seeds in there. So hopefully we'll have a nice crop of those in the end. Same thing happened with our yellow sweet Spanish onions. 
pelleted, came up sparse, had to replant. And then this flat here is our Dalmatian peach foxglove. Got some chicken fodder going here. And then over on this side, the back flat is Camelot white foxglove. You can see that they have not been up for very long. All the foxglove flats are pretty little. This is the Echinacea purpurea, so just the classic purple cone flower. I think I'm gonna leave the dome off. Pretty much all the cells are up now. I'm so excited about that. I'm excited because I, you know, after I seeded those and talked about how bad of luck I had with them last year, so many of you guys said, well, I think it's because they need a cold period and they're probably not gonna get that in the greenhouse. And then I thought, well, that would make sense, but we'll see what happens. Uh, so that flat is up. The other two are not. And the other two were, oh, you know what? There's one coming up, yay. The other two, no, there's two in this flat. Oh, these were seeds that were sent to me by one of you guys, and I've had them for probably, I don't know, five plus years at this point. And I just decided I'm gonna use up the bags. They're just like little baggies full of those and see what happens. So hopefully we even just get a few. I would be happy with that. But again, you know, you don't wanna be too hasty. Just leave them alone. Sometimes they'll surprise you. So this is the green twister. There's actually one coming up right here. There's one right here and i didn't notice anything yesterday and i'm looking at these pretty closely so that just happened silent springs in the cheyenne spirit echinacea tray and then pink petticoat columbine and then the double pink columbine nothing yet i'm really happy with how things are going in here so far and you know we start so many seeds that even if a few trays don't come up or are spotty it's totally fine because we have enough plenty to fill up our garden space Okay, I'm just gonna try to go quickly, but most of these, like all of these right here, are the annuals we started uh, six days ago. China asters, I'm just starting to notice a couple pop through, but not much yet. Feverfew is starting to pop. I'm seeing quite a number of little green. I mean, kinda have to look hard, but you can see that little haze of green coming up. Both of these flats are the Campanulas, and I'm noticing quite a bit of green in these flats. We're getting close to where I'll take the humidity domes off of most of these. I wait until most of the seeds have sprouted to do that. In this flat, we have Gomfrina, and they really are starting to go for it. They're pretty dark colored though, so they're a little bit harder to see. We've got Rudbeckia in these two flats. Oh my goodness, look at this. <laughs> ah, I'm gonna leave the humidity dome off of this flat. This one, the back half looks like it needs a little bit more time. This flat is full of Celosia. We've got a few different varieties. Most of them are up really strong, except for the Crystal Beauty. I'm gonna give that a few, probably a day or two more before I pop the dome off that one permanently. Then, oh my goodness, <laughs> these flats right here. So first off, we have all of the Dianthus. I'm gonna move those out to the greenhouse probably tomorrow. Notice how leggy those are, a couple of reasons. So these light systems, the three-tier grow light gardens, when I very first got them, they had the regular bulbs where you, know, you have to raise and lower the ballasts in order for these the seedlings to stay really strong and you know you just raise the light as the seedlings grow well i swapped all the bulbs out for the high output high efficiency led bulbs to where you don't have to move the ballast up and down they have strong enough light to keep the plants happy and they don't stretch out well i forgot in this one particular ballast the uh, bulb the bulbs burn, burned out or something. Something happened with the LED bulbs and I had to swap them for my old bulbs and I forgot about that. So, you know, these popped up so fast that I just didn't even realize how quickly they were growing. Um, and I, I lowered the light as soon as I noticed. So I think that's one of the reasons why they're a little bit leggy. Also, I do have the 11 by 22 trays running, you know, this way instead of under the light 100%, which does affect things a little bit, but it does allow me to fit a lot more under these lights so if you take a close look you can see these in the middle if i would have had the light low like this instead of all the way up here they wouldn't have stretched like this they'll be totally fine but these are going more straight up while these on the sides are reaching in because i have the flats you know this way instead of running this way anyway everything's good though i'm really happy with the germination and they these came up so thick uh, we've got straw flowers here, and then in this flat, we've got a bunch of, of different things. The Joey's lamb, Joey's lamb tail right here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six out of six. <laughs> That's awesome. We've got Sorinth up. Chocolate flower is almost all up, and then the sunball craspedia in the back. Over here, we have status. I wonder what variety this is. This is the forever silver. Holy moly, look at the difference here. Wow. Below that, we have a flat of snapdragons and 
another flat of snapdragons all came up beautifully three more flats of snapdragons here so we've got this one this one and that one and the flat down here is our dusty miller look at how beautifully they came up this is the new look variety and i think i mean it's not 100 percent germination because i know i put two in each cell at least so see like there's three in this one only one of my seeds came up in this cell so i probably only put two in that one same with this cell that cell and that cell but in the end like that's all we need one per cell it's awesome bottom shelf we have our fig experiment and our butterfly peas going in this level we have the sage this is the hormonum sage the one from monticello anyway it said on the packet to put more in the cells than normal because of low germination rate i think they came up pretty good the rottenest daisy in the back half of this flat i don't see any action yet then we've got another flat of status and then we've got our mahogany splendor hibiscus and our rosella hibiscus isn't that interesting these came up like all strong and green and these are kind of yellow hmm, we'll see then we've got a flat of lysianthus in the back this is the <laughs> crop i've struggled with fungus gnats i think i pretty much got it handled and they are starting to put on growth but a lot of them are just itty bitty like there's stuff in most of these cells you can hardly see it. So raise your hand if your Lysianthus looks better than mine. <laughs> I'm guessing most of yours does. Oh my goodness, I just waited too long to treat those dang fungus gnats. Uh, but I think we'll have plenty of flowers from these. They are a surprising crop. I remember the first year I grew Lysianthus, I made a post like well after I started them because of how tiny they were. And I thought, what am I doing wrong? I'm fertilizing, I'm doing the same thing I do with all the other seedlings that I have great luck with. And I cannot remember which one of you, but one of you guys who is a flower farmer on Instagram that I follow, I should see if I could find it, but you messaged me and just said, don't give up on this crop. Once you plant them outside, like they will be puny plants, but once you start them outside, they will absolutely explode with growth. And you were right, <laughs> they did. And I get so many flowers from every single year. And every year that I grow them, I kind of, I put them in the ground and think, like, I don't even know if I wanna show this, like they're not gonna do anything. And every year they seem to produce the most beautiful and glorious flowers. So what I ended up doing for the fungus gnats, you can see that these are all topped with sand. I tried just the 100% sand route because you know, they, they say that fungus gnats don't like to burrow their way or walk through sand. Um, so it really discourages them. I also had the sticky traps out. Last year I tried the mosquito bits in the water and that was didn't work. And so eventually I scraped off the entire top layer of soil on these and I put mosquito bits down, then sand down. And uh, it still didn't 100% take care of the problem. I was still catching adults on the sticky traps. So I ended up ordering some of that natural. It's G-N-A-T-R-O-L. Uh, it's hard to find in smaller packets. There's like one, maybe one website where you can get it in small packets. Otherwise you have to get it in this huge tub, but it's just, it's Baxillus thuringiensis. It's the BT. It's the same thing that mosquito bits are, but it's a powder that you um, mix into water. It does not take very much and you use it once every, like once a week for two or three applications and it pretty much eradicates the problem. Uh, so anyway, if you struggle with fungus gnats, I would definitely try to get a hold of some of that. Uh, I just found it more effective and easier to use than the BT or anything else that I had tried prior. I was really thinking that the sand was starting to work uh, and I do think it helped discourage them. It definitely took the population down. I haven't done any natural or anything in the Hartley. I noticed a couple of fungus gnats and I did the sand on top of my geraniums and it I haven't noticed an issue since then and on top of my house plants in there. But the thing I don't like about the sand is I can't I can't gauge the moisture of the soil because you can't see it. Um, so that has been a little bit of a, a hard thing. I have to finger test the soil and all of that. It's not hard. It's just an extra step and it's kind of a pain when usually you can just with your eyes look and see if your plants need water. So that's it, you guys. That's the state of our seedlings at the moment. I mean, pretty good luck so far. I mean, we always have those few flats that we either struggle with or we're waiting on, which is the case with some of ours. We have tons of plants to work with already. We have a few more seeds to start, our six, four to six week uh, seeds. I know I have a lot of stock that I need to get going, which will probably be this week. Um, and we also have to start more ranunculus and anemones and get those all, get those things going. Anyway, lots of fun stuff. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye. P.S. you guys, I did go grab some more containers so I could pot up these lettuce plants. 
and I think these will be plenty big enough for these to fully mature. They look so pretty and healthy.